So Poco believes that the Poco F4 is the true successor to the Poco F1. And you know what? After using this phone, I wholeheartedly agree. If you don't know me yet, I'm Arshad. You're watching Track and Take English. And this is our detailed review of the Poco F4, a phone that I think is tailor-made for the Indian buyers. Now, the first reason why I think that the Poco F4 is a great phone is the display experience. The display on this phone is very good. You get the 6.67 inch E4 FHD plus AMOLED panel with a 120Hz refresh rate, which is basically like a smart switch refresh rate. What that means is that the display can refresh between 30Hz, 60Hz and 120Hz, depending on the content that's playing on your screen. Now, I don't watch or play a lot of 30fps content, so I didn't see that 30Hz switch happening, but 120Hz to 60Hz, it was absolutely seamless. And mate it to that 120Hz, refresh rate is 360Hz touch sampling rate, which means that the touch experience on the phone is really good too. Having said that, there are three reasons why I think this display is really good. It has one of the tiniest punch holes that I've seen on a smartphone yet. The chin size is really small too. And more importantly, you get support for Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus right out of the box, which is not available in many phones in this price range. The Dolby Vision support is so good that I legit watched a couple of episodes of Stranger Things on this phone phone and you know it looks really good the HDR performance is very good in fact the HDR performance is good even on YouTube now rounding up that multimedia experience is a pair of uh, you know proper stereo speaker setup which means that you get a speaker at the bottom and a speaker at the top now these speakers also have support for Dolby Atmos and I found that they have a decent amount of uh, you know loudness but uh, the bass levels are really good and there's a lot of heft to the low end you know what take a listen for yourself and let me know what you guys think And before I forget, this phone also has support for high-res audio in wired and in wireless mode. But of course, you don't get a 3.5mm uh, you know, headphone jack on the phone, but you do get a Type-C to 3.5mm cable inside the box. You should try it out. I think that it does make your you know, wired equipment sound really good. I tried the you know, Moondrop uh, Blessing 2 that I have and it sounds really good on the you know, Poco F4. Now, if you've come this far and if you like what you see, don't forget to hit the like button and maybe even comment below for the sake of the YouTube algorithm because it promotes engagement. And if you do like the kind of content that we make, don't forget to hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever we put out an awesome new tech video. Now, coming back to the display, the color accuracy is actually pretty good. You get original color settings on the phone itself. You can go to settings and, you know, change that. That is the, you know, natural kind of color tuning that I generally prefer. And there is no visible color shift either at angles, which is is very very good plus the outdoor legibility in sunlight is very good because you know the brightness levels the peak brightness levels in regular usage is actually very high in fact that reminds me that uh, you know in HDR videos the peak brightness can touch a max of 1300 nits which is actually very good for a phone in this price range also part of that display is that x-axis motor for haptic feedback the vibration feedback is tuned really well it's tight it's crisp and it's very precise too Again, kudos, Poco. Now you must be wondering, it has an OLED panel, so it'll have an in-display fingerprint scanner, but that's not really the case. You get a side-mounted physical fingerprint scanner on the power button, which is very good. It's very fast at unlocking the phone. I don't see any problem with it as such. Now talking about the power button, the power button and the volume rocker are placed on the right spine. They have a very good tactile feedback as well. Now that we're talking about the design, the sides are made of plastic and the rear is made of glass and on the front you get Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protection. On the rear, I don't think there is any Corning protection. Now by now you know that this phone has flat sides very similar to the iPhone, but what I like about the flat sides themselves are that it is a very smooth flat side and therefore it doesn't dig into your palm when you're holding it. Actually on the whole, the phone does have a very nice look to it. This boxy design is something that I genuinely prefer. The in-hand feel is also aided by the fact that the phone weighs about 195 grams which is lower than 200 grams therefore it doesn't feel too heavy in the hand and uh, apart from that it is also only 7.7 .7 millimeters thick which makes it one of the most comfortable and handy phones for a phone of this size and this phone is available in a green shade which i think looks really nice it's got this restrained yet classy look it's it's this kind of look where the phone knows that it looks good, but it doesn't have to show it off. And you also get this raised dual platform camera module on the rear, which doesn't wobble too much on the table. And the other good thing about the phone is that you get support for IP53 rating, which means that you can, uh, you know, expect it to withstand a few sprays of water for sure. Now at the bottom, you get a Type-C 2.0 port, the speakers that I mentioned about, and a slot for dual nano SIM cards. 
Unfortunately, there's no support for a micro SD card slot. And on the top, you get this infrared scanner, which is a standard with most Xiaomi and Poco phones. Now, when you look at the design, the Poco F1, which, you know, is the spiritual predecessor to this phone, had a very functional design, but it was not really very good looking as such. I feel that, you know, the Poco F4 is both good looking and functional at the same time. In China, the phone is available as a Redmi K40s, but in India, it's available as a Poco F4, so that doesn't really matter. This is a good looking phone. Now coming to the camera setup on the rear, you get a 64 megapixel primary camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel macro camera. And on the front, you have a 20 megapixel selfie camera. Now let's start with the performance of the primary camera. What I really liked about this primary camera is that it is a fast shooter with very fast focus as well. So you won't miss a shot even if a subject is moving. Now when given enough light, it takes bright and vivid photos and it is adequately sharp too. And I noticed that the close-up shots look very crisp with a very gorgeous natural bokeh as well. And when it comes to color science, I like the fact that Poco has tried to keep it uh, as natural looking as possible, which is great. Now in HDR multi-stack processing, the phone is good at bringing out details from the shadows, but not as good at controlling the highlights, which you can tell from this image. And what I noticed is that there is a bit of a lens flare in HDR shots as well. Now pictures of people look good. There's a slight red facial tone, but it's not too bad. And you know, the facial details are crisp enough, but soft around the edges of the entire image, if you ask me. Against the light, it is good enough, but you know, the facial details become kind of soft. Portrait mode algorithm is something that Poco and Xiaomi have, you know, mastered over the years, where you get this gradual depth of field effect, which is very nice. And it's got a good edge cutout too. And the face is crisp enough. Although once the light starts getting dimmer, the primary camera struggles to retrieve enough details, but manages to maintain the color as well. Now, optical image stabilization on the lens does help negate the shake a little bit, but the sensor is not capable enough to let in a lot of light. Here are a few samples for you to see in artificial and low light, so you guys can see the difference between the daylight shots and the low light shots. Now coming to the ultra wide angle camera, it is good for an eight megapixel camera. The ultra wide angle distortion correction is done well uh, using software algorithm and it is fairly crisp in daylight shots. But of course, low light ultra wide shots don't look as good. What I did like about the Poco F4 though is that it does maintain a good color science consistency between the ultra wide angle camera and the primary camera. Now two megapixel macro camera is something that I don't really prefer that much, but they're as sharp as they get for a two megapixel macro camera. Now coming to selfies shot using the 20 megapixel selfie camera, they're over sharpened and slightly contrast heavy and against the light particularly so there is this tone mapped look as well which i'm not really a fan of and low light selfies is where the poco f4 kind of struggles it's soft even with the night mode on is what i noticed selfie portraits however just like the portraits with the regular camera have a good edge cutout and nice gradual depth of field too video recording is something that i appreciate on the poco f4 it can shoot up to 4k 60 fps video using the main camera but only with optical image stabilization you do not get electronic image stabilization but some phones even with ois cannot do as good stabilization as the poco f4 which is a very good thing especially in this price range the footage also looks crisp and the dynamic range is not too bad either now what i thought about the sound recording is that it manages to capture the sound of the humans well but it doesn't cut out the environmental noise as well now I'm shooting a 4K 30fps video using the phone. Of course, you get EIS on this, uh, you know, phone. Now, when you shoot 4K 30fps video, though, you get EIS plus OIS, which means that the stabilization is much better. But I did notice a bit of focus hunting once in a while. The ultra wide angle camera can also shoot videos. It tops out at 1080p 30fps. It is soft video, of course, but a great stabilization with EIS. That's something that I wanted to mention. Selfie video also tops out at 1080p 30fps with electronic image stabilization, which is a very good thing. But the quality of the video, of course, is much better than the ultra wide. I like the recording quality. You can take a look at it. It looks crisp. It looks clean and a decent dynamic range performance too and the sound recording is great as well now i'm recording using the front camera on the poco f4 now what i like about the poco f4's camera is that you get a lot of modes for example there's this vlog mode then there are these movie effects which look damn good as well i really like this uh, you know, parallel world effect that I keep shooting with often when I get a Xiaomi or a Poco phone. And then there is this movie frame mode for photos and videos, which kind of looks good too. So the Poco F4's camera setup is 
much better than what I expected it to be, especially when you give it enough light, uh, the primary camera can shoot good images. I would have expected better selfie performance, but then, you know, you do get great video recording as well. That is something good. And of course, when you give it uh, enough light, even the ultra wide angle camera can shoot good images. Now, unfortunately, I cannot do any comparison as such in this video because the comparison embargo is for a later date. So let me know what phones would you like me to compare it with in the comment section below. I'm thinking the Icon EOS 6 and the Nord 2T whenever it launches, but you know, you guys tell me what you would like to, you know, compare with the Poco F4. Now the Poco F4 has one of my favorite SOCs from Qualcomm ever and that is the Snapdragon 870. It has a very good balance of brute power and power efficiency. It's of course not very powerful, but it manages uh, to maintain temperatures low and of course giving you sustained performance as well. So you get an antitude score of 7 lakh plus which was expected from a Snapdragon 870 phone. But more importantly on the Poco F4, I got a CPU throttle stability of 88% with 40 cores running for 30 minutes which is the best I've managed on a 8 series chip yet. And apart from that, in one of my favorite uh, throttle tests, the 3D Mark, uh, you know, wildlife stress test, I got a stability of 99.1%. And you get a vapor cooling chamber inside the phone, which keeps the phone running cool for long gaming sessions. I did play a lot of uh, sessions of Apex Legends on the phone. In fact, I played for one hour at a stretch and the phone didn't heat up as much. It reaches to about 40, 42 degrees, but not more than that. Now, apart from Snapdragon 870, you also get LPDDR5 RAM, UFS 3.1 storage, which keeps things running very smooth, especially with MIUI 13's optimized animations. I felt that you know the phone was very fast in daily usage. Now talking about MIUI 13, it's running on top of Android 12, of course, and you get the April security patch with the phone. Quickly wanted to add that the Poco F4 actually got the June security update after shooting the video, so that's a good thing. Now, Poco hasn't confirmed how many years of software updates you'll get with the phone. The moment it does it, I will let you guys know in a pinned comment below. Now, MIUI 13, as you guys all know already, is a very feature-packed software and a fork of Android. You get, uh, you know, features like Super Wallpapers, which is one of my favorite features on, uh, you know, any fork of Android. And you get stuff like floating windows, Plus, you can also change the icon pack if you wish. There are a couple of irritations though. It is a convoluted process to uninstall an app and even uh, to do a basic task as change the wallpaper. Overall, I do like my UI 13, especially in this price range. I feel that it is better, uh, more polished, refined than, you know, Funtouch OS. Now talking about network connectivity, you get support for Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and more importantly, you get support for 4G carrier aggregation and VO Wi-Fi as well, both of which worked really well in my time with the phone. I had absolutely no call drops, and more importantly, I didn't face any problem with the sound quality of the earpiece as well. The calls sounded very crisp. And considering that 5G auction is happening really soon in India, you do get support for 10 5G bands on the Poco F4, which is of course a very good thing. Now coming to the battery on the phone, like I mentioned, it's a slightly smaller 4,500mAh unit. Mostly you get a 5,000mAh unit inside most phones in this price range, but the battery performance is very good. I literally battered the phone and I got about, you know, anywhere between five hours and six hours of screen on time, depending on my usage. And I can assure you, you can expect up to seven to eight hours, provided you use it moderately. Basically, you can expect over one day of battery life from the phone. I use it constantly in performance mode. You guys can use it in balance mode and you can expect better battery life for sure. And it goes without saying that this phone comes with a 67 watt charger inside the box which can charge the phone from 0 to 100 in about 37 38 minutes which is very fast for any kind of usage that's more than enough i don't really need a 120 watt charger if you guys like 120 watt chargers let me know in the comment section below and why that is also very important to know Surrounding things up, the Poco F4 is easily one of the best phones that I've used this year. And I'm waging a bet that it will possibly be one of the most uh, affordable Snapdragon 870 phones, if not the most affordable one. Because of course, we don't know the price at the time of shooting this review. But what I'm specifically glad about is the fact that the Poco F4 is not just a performance phone. It's actually a well-balanced phone. The display is really good. You get support for 10 5G bands. You also get decent battery performance and you know, very fast charging as well it's a well-rounded product uh, which actually will uh, you know appeal to a larger audience set as well and let's not forget that the camera performance is actually better than what i expected it to be unfortunately i cannot compare the poco f4 with any 4 at the moment i can do that 
probably a week later. So let me know which phone would you guys want me to compare it with in the comment section below and I will get that done for you. So that was our detailed review of the Poco F4. Let me know if you guys have any more doubts. I will try to solve them in the comment section below. Until next time, this is Ashad signing off. Keep tracking and stay safe.